Hello everyone, my name is Katarina Guzu Fauci and I'm currently lecturer in Material Culture Studies at Leiden University, where I have also completed my PhD in 2020. In this presentation, I will give examples of how an experimental archaeology program provided insights into the production of bodily ornaments in the pre-colonial Caribbean. So, several uh, ornaments have been recovered from indigenous archaeological sites in the Caribbean islands, from simple perforated discs to complex zoomorphic or anthropomorphic pendants, these artifacts were made of a large variety of lithic resources and hard animal materials. Bid-making workshop contexts are known from early time periods, but few studies have focused on ornament production so far. Later archaeological contexts seem to lack production debris almost altogether. So my PhD research aimed to understand the biographies of such ornaments with focus on unraveling their production sequences and patterns of use in connection to exchange networks. Microair analysis offered the possibility of identifying traces formed on the surface of a bead or a pendant during its lifetime. So in combination with an experimental program, microscopic observations can be used to fill in the gaps and reconstruct the production sequences of ornaments. So uh, in this sense, I carried out an experimental program in several seasons to provide reference for the interpretation of tools and techniques used in ornament making. The experiments were meant to emulate the diagnostic traces formed by a given technique according to contact material and work the time. So the main bead materials I tested were calcite, diorite, amethyst, but also marine shells, especially quincunc and Atlantic thorny oyster. The tools were selected on based on availability in the region, non-archaeological tools, ethnohistoric and ethnographic references, and of course, uh, observed the traces on the archaeological material. So in the following slides, I list some of the techniques I gained insight on through the, this experimental program. The products of the experiments were examined following a similar protocol to the archaeological material, so using a stereo microscope and a metallographic microscope. The studied collections were mainly comprised of finished ornaments or highly modified preforms. So evidence for blank production or early reduction uh, techniques was often scarce. Um, so the experiments were carried out also to understand what traces would be characteristic of the use of sewing techniques and how they would be changed after grinding, for instance. So um, just some general observations. Um, the use of straight, of rigid straight saws made of a flint blade, for instance, produced the cut grooves with a triangular cross section in which the bottom was markedly narrower than the outer edges with long and straight uh, scratches on the sides. In contrast, sawing with a cotton string with abrasives produced narrow cut grooves with parallel sides and a, co a convex bottom with semicircular striations and undulations on, the pro on its profile. When it comes to carving or let's say decorative techniques, uh, creating a notch on the edge of a sandstone slab produced uh, traces somewhat similar to the, the, the ones produced with flint with marked striations, but with a wider and shallower groove, which shows that the, the shape of the saw and its weathering are also are, are important in the formation of the traces. So creating a notch with a wooden saw with added abrasives and water was also tested. On the sides of Atlantic thorny oyster, it produced a wide U-shaped notch with striations running on its sides. When it comes to the perforation of ornaments, drill bits made of different materials were tested. Um, drilling with flint drill bits produced markedly conical perforations with irregular concentric uh, striations or scratches and bright and flat polish on its inner walls. We also tested uh, drilling with wooden and bone drills to perforate shell. The resulting perforations displayed a rough texture with broad circular rings, so di quite different from the ones produced with flint. Um, the end tip of the drilled hole did display some polish and fine scratches, um, most likely because of the accumulation of abrasive material on this area, so on the leading edge of the hole. 
grinding experiments um, produced the distinctive micro traces um, identifiable as hard contact, uh, hard stone contact material, which is not surprisingly. Um, but the resulting surface polish and microtopography varied markedly according to the grinding platform's characteristics, so grain size and uh, mineral composition, as well as the presence of sand and or water. Polishing, um, so polishing calcite and diorite on a palm cane erased these grinding traces to a large degree and superposed them with a different polish, uh, more invasive, but at the same time rather cratered, uh, displaying uh, fine scratches with also marked directionality. So this was just an overview of the experiments I have done, and they have allowed me to characterize the traces connected to specific motions and contact materials. While displacing most traces in isolation, the experiments provided me with a reference collection for disentangling and interpreting the traces observed on the archaeological materials. Um, the microstatigraphy of traces can ultimately uh, be related to the different events in the life or in the biography of an artifact. Uh, so, continuing investigation of especially these abrasive techniques that are still poorly understood is necessary to better understand the sophisticated ornament-making technologies and strategies used by indigenous peoples from the Caribbean. So, this is it. Thank you very much for, for, uh, for your attention, and I would also like to uh, thank the institutions and people on this slide. Thank you. Bye.